गुड मॉर्निंग हैदराबाद Thanks for taking your Friday mornings to listen to a boring topic like insurance. I'm really grateful for that. Um, so my name is Amitansh. I head the new products at Bharti Axa General Insurance, which happens to be one of the biggest uh, general insurer in India. Uh, a bit about my background: uh, I am a IIT Kanpur computer science engineer, and I started my career as a data scientist in a couple of startups in Bangalore. Moved a few companies, and eventually found my way into insurance. so let's let's talk about insurance and let's uh, let me give you a brief uh, you know picture of what's in store for the next 45 minutes of course we'll talk about insurance we'll talk about products and most importantly we'll talk about claims uh, we'll also talk about how machine learning is sort of giving an edge to the insurers in india in terms of improving their consumer experience their revenues and everything good with the products So let's start with this image. Can we dim the lights a bit? I think it's not visible properly. This the infamous Great Fire of London in the late 17th century. Uh, it was responsible for burning about a thousand or ten thousand homes, displacing a hundred thousand people, and it actually, you know, uh, turned one third of the London into ashes in just five days. it was so devastating that it led people to come together and you know rich people the council and the government bodies to come together and think that how to control such a event in future and that is how they got together they scribbled some numbers in paper saying that okay you know the chances of getting a fire is this it can spread by this rate affecting this and this lives this and this houses we can charge this to each and every person and let's let's say that in case of a fire we will rebuild their house that is how fire insurance got invented and that is actually the start of modern insurance as we know of it it also led to forming something called lloyds of london syndicate which is you know a really famous insurance marketplace so those of you who are bored just pick up the phones google top 10 unusual risks insured at lloyds of london you won't be you know disappointed thank me later so people insure everything and anything like the smile Uh, Ronaldo's legs even a cockroach for a movie bug was in stock uh, insured at the Lloyds of London so let's fast forward to the indian markets we have about 57 insurance companies out of which we have 33 general insurance and life insurance companies which are called non life insurance and we have about 24 life insurance companies we are a industry which is in our teeny 20s uh, we were liberalized in 2000 so the industry is now entering 20 years of establishment with players like bajaj icici tata already in the market from long that being said we as a industry are not very profitable the combined ratios are more than 100 what a combined ratio mean is for every 100 rupee of premium that we collect we are losing more than 100 in terms of paying out the consumer or managing our processes right so that's that's not a good thing but still we are inching closer towards profitability every single day so let's take time to understand insurance before we deep dive into claims and into uh, machine learning so insurance is a very simple com- concept think of them as like chit funds you know there is a person who pays a small premium that premium is gathered from all the people with the company the company uses for managing in case of a loss and when there is a loss the company pays out the claim and the remaining is profit which either goes to the next year pools or is used within that year to do other initiatives let's talk about claims claims is by far the most important process or journey in in a insurance life cycle because truly we do not have any other touch point with the consumer apart from claims nobody cares you know when we sell insurance it's just a piece of paper it's nothing else it's just a promise that says you know what when you break down your car or when you end up hospitalizing yourself we will come in and we'll pay you the money right that's the piece of paper with what says but truly insurance process is fundamentally dependent on something called claims which is typically this long process so let's say you have a car 
and you accidentally hit it up against a wall, another car or something like that. So the way to get the money is very complex right now. You first intimate the claims, you submit complex document, right? You fill them up, nature of accident, circumstances of accident and so on and so forth. And then you maybe manually submit some data. Then there's a claim assessor who is appointed to your car. He comes and visits your car, sees the extent of damages, says that, okay, I'll pay 50% for plastic, I'll pay 100% for metal. And there's some sort of all these conditions which are around at play. And then finally you get your money, right? And this money is also through a check or a demand draft. So it's not a very simple UPI or Paytm payment that you would expect as a millennial. <coughs> so before understanding why claims are important, let's see why is insurance so insurance is not a very loved sector, right? Nobody wakes up in the morning to think that, okay, today I'm going to renew my health insurance or I'm going to buy my motor insurance, right? It's a necessity. That's why we buy insurance. It's not like buying a phone or buying a pair of jeans. So typically as millennials, you have brands like, you know, Ola, Uber, CureFit, setting up high expectations in terms of uh, serving that superior sort of experience to you, delivering that amazing smartphone experience. You know, you can book your gym class, you can book your cab, you can book your food and whatever, whatnot. And on the other hand is insurance, which has long cumbersome processes. The products are age old. They are not even thought through. It's a one size fits all approach. And there's no sort of, you know, drastic change for an insurance policy for the person sitting in the front versus the person sitting in the back, wherein in reality, they both can have very different lifestyles. Insurance also doesn't leverage a lot of data that can be freely available to us. So for example, to make products that really matter to the audience, what I can use is, you know, the spending behavior. I can see how people spend so that to be able to recommend to them what is the sum insured. The sum insured is called basically the amount of money which is liable to be paid to you. So for example, I can buy a health insurance policy with a sum insured of 10 lakhs and the gentleman over here can buy a health insurance policy with a sum insured of 10 crores, right? It depends on how much is the purchasing capacity. So that can be leveraged. The credit score is a really good factor which can tell that if I have a good credit score and I have SIPs which I pay on time, it obviously means I will pay my life insurance premiums on time as well. So that's a very good factor to tell whether a consumer will pay the life insurance premium on time or not. Health is another big factor. You know, those of you who are wearing Fitbit, Apple watches and other smart watches, right? We can track that data and say that, okay, this is an average healthy person and he does not need to pay as high as a premium that the other person should pay who is eating unhealthy or eating junk or so on and so forth. So health data can be utilized. Location is also a very critical factor. So if I'm driving my car to office, which is just five kilometers in Mumbai, I should be charged lesser than a guy who's driving a Ola all over the Mumbai all over the day. Gender, age and income are another factors. Personality is an interesting one because it's very open-ended. It's, it's something of a behavioral aspect that can also be leveraged, which uh, is very subtle to sort of price into the premium, but it is there. So we'll, we'll talk about it in the, in the slides. Let's talk about why AI is not just a luxury, but it's sort of a necessity to reinvent insurance claims, right? So we discussed the claim process was something like this. It has six complex steps. It should not be like that, right? So I should be able to pick up my phone and register a claim. Then, you know, there should be an auto check of the eligibility that, you know, what car I had, whether the policy was eligible or not. Immediately, I should get a whole workflow where I can upload some other proofs. And that should lead me to get my money, right? It's that simple. It's that is how it should be. But because of certain complications in the products that are designed like that. So for example, if we take health insurance, right, there's things like critical illness, there's things like deductible, there's things like copay. These are all fancy technical terms, but they have, we, let, let, me, let me take the consumer hat. These are sneaky terms, right? So when you're in the hospital, sort of trying to, you know, you, as, a, as a layman consumer, we feel that our bills will be paid, but then an insurer comes in and says, you know what, 50% is to be borne by you. And then I'm like sitting there hoping that out of the one lakh rupee bill, I'll eventually pay 50,000. What, what is this insurance policy worth to me? So all of these conditions makes it 
a bit tough to sort of automate in, uh, quickly. And, and, and that's why we need to really, really go deep and understand the process from ground up, which is how can I actually reimagine not just the claim process in isolation, but rather insurance products as whole. Because unless and until I think about insurance products as whole, I am never going to be able to solve the claims puzzle. So this is a very plain vanilla architecture of how uh, AI claims or rather AI insurance product system could look. You get your data from all the touch points of consumer, which is the personal data, on-site data, engagement data, and purchase data. You have a pipeline where you sort of mix this data and, and take it for um, the whole analytics engine, where you clean the data, transform the data, segment it, cluster it, and do all the wonderful things with that, and then put it something into a insightful engine which says, OK, shut this plant in Jhansi, or you know, increase the price of this product, because there's a lot of claims being reported. And then you sort of take action on that. But even before that, right? So we need to sort of rethink claims. And um, to do that, we need to rethink products. And how can we rethink products? It's, it's, you know, it's very simple to say, but when I go back to office tomorrow, or day after tomorrow, Monday, it's, it's, it's not an easy game. And I think one of the things that I have learned in the journey with AXA is that sometimes just listening to the consumer makes all the difference. Right, so there are consumers giving you hints about what they want from the insurer all the time. They would say, you know, why should I use? So Airtel is one of the parent company of Bharti AXA. That's where Bharti in AXA comes from. And I mean, a consumer can say, why should I pay the premium for Airtel? Why cannot pay from Paytm or something like that? So these types of questions can come. They can say, you know, what if I know I'm not going to get sick, but you know, critical illness can strike me. So can you just give me a cover for critical illness like cancer or something else like that and just chuck away the cover for health, heart, and all the other sort of common diseases because I know it's not going to happen. So, you know, those customized products, can you do that? And frankly, uh, with the workforce which is shaping up now, which is increasingly millennial. So millennials are 60% of the workforce right now. It's poised to grow to 80% combined with Gen Zs, who are the people who are born after 1999-ish. And together, these cohort would really define how not just insurance, but any industry deals with the consumers. Because these are the consumers. These are the ones who are paying in the economy. So to, in order to be winning their hearts, the core central strategy that we need to adopt in terms of thinking insurance is very simple. We need to start with product innovation. We need to make sure that the products that we have in the market are not just motor insurance, health insurance, home insurance, and all those products existing from decades ago. We need to rethink the products that are right now suitable for the audience, thinking the current need. So there's a virus which is spreading like crazy and caused a global scare, which is called coronavirus. In fact, I'm carrying a mask today just because of you know fear of getting it catching it because you know air uh, I'm coming from Mumbai and uh, airplanes are the most common hotspots for catching virus you know I'm scared so I am health conscious I'm scared can there be a cover for pandemics like this is a question that we can all ask and answer is no current in Indian insurance industry doesn't provide any cover so in case you contract the virus a there's no cure B you will not have the money to support your treatment Right? which is something should not happen. Right? At least if there's no cure, you should have the money to sort of keep you in incubation, support your financial expenses, and help you cope that adversity. And here is why insurance claims again take the limelight, because unlike any other industry, insurance claims are not a happy thing. It's a thing which is associated with adversity. And you know, it's, 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 it's like saying, it's not like buying you know, a jeans and getting a wrong color or getting a wrong size. I mean, that is fine. You, know, you can wait for two minutes on an Amazon call center. But imagine in insurance, your car is all banged up on the road. And then you call up a call center, and this guy makes you wait for three minutes. Right? It's a big deal then. Because maybe you're hurt. Maybe you need emergency assistance. So there, three minutes makes all the difference versus three minutes on the Amazon call center. So 
So in order to be able to give a good claims experience, what we did was we designed products which we thought are really going to be useful for the consumers, starting with consumer durables like spectacles and jewelry. Our, a cover called Hospi Cash, which doesn't indemnify you, it just gives you cash if you're hospitalized. There's a cover for travel, and this travel cover is not unlike any other travel. I'll talk more about that. It's a very special travel cover which just covers flight delays. Because honestly, flight delays are the only thing that happen frequently, right? I don't think a lot of people, I mean, some of you would have, but I don't think it's a majority of you people would have lost a baggage or would have, you know, had a heart attack in the flight. Of course, there's an audience, but that's a very small risk. And you're paying a premium of 125, 150, 250 rupees. And, you know, you're covering for the things which are not going to happen, right? It's absurd. It's non-relevant. It's redundant. Those covers should be rethought. And that is where the travel insurance comes in. There's a cyber cover which can protect your identity from being loose in the market, which is, you know, maybe if some of you do a lot of Amazon transactions, it would not be a surprise if you go on 4chan or 8tor and find your username password there for $25. I mean, those of you who have a computer science Linux background, just give it a try. And I mean, it never fails to give wonders. Wallet insurance is another product which protects your cards against unwanted skimming, phishing, phising attacks. You know, all of us have cards and there's an increasing risk when you go international because there they don't even require your PIN. So they have your number, they have the CVV, your transaction would be done. There's of course home insurance which is a bit rethought and the rethinking there is that apart from the structural damage to the home which is your uh, earthquake, fire and other damages, you also try to cover the contents of a home. Right, so that's the new part there. This is again an interesting product that we got our approval from IRDA Sandbox. IRDA is the Indian regulator which governs how the insurance is bought and sold. It's called usage-based motor insurance. It's typically for those people who drive their car really, really less. For example, if I have two cars and I use one for my primary mode of transport and the second is just to occasionally take it out on joy rides or something like that. So I do not need to pay the same amount of premium because it is all getting driven about 5,000 kilometers in a year. So this insurance product can, can make it much more cheaper for buying another insurance product if you want to drive less. That's usage-based insurance. There's bicycle insurance, there's pet insurance. There's also event insurance, which is to say that, let's say if I'm going to watch an IPL match and the, the rain starts pouring in the middle of the match, right? Typically what would happen is I won't get money. Maybe I get money from the event organizer, but it's really rare because the match has already started. So what if I say I have an insurance product that you can buy when you're going to watch a match and if it rains, you know, I would not ask you anything. I would get this data independently from a third party source and uh, sort of pay you out when I get to know this automatically, instantly to your wallet, right? That's the proposition that we are making with the event cancellation product. There's also a product that we're thinking to file on air quality index insurance uh, in Delhi and nearby regions. If you are tracking the news, it's really hazardous. The, the, the pollution level are about 350 uh, of the PM 2.5 and PM 10 per particulate matter. These are the sediments that have the capacity to stay in your lungs forever. So there's no way of getting them out once you inhale them. And there's a lot of chance that people who are in these regions will develop some sort of lung disorders uh, because of these products. So we have to envisage ahead of the time. We cannot be thinking, okay, this is health motor uh, house. We have to think that what are the risks that people are facing right now? Because insurance, if at all it is any business, is the business of managing risk. And of course, there's a product for gadget insurance, which covers your phone, tablets, smartphones, smartwatches, so on and so forth. So all these products, right, right here are the products where we have fundamentally rethought the entire claims journey. And in some of them, the claims journey is non-existent, which means you do not need to claim. The product itself is designed that when you buy, that's job well done on your side. Everything else is with the insurance company, is their prerogative to get your money to you. Let's, let's talk about some in, something interesting. So how many of you are from finance background? Can I get a show of hands? All the way up. We are not PS3 celebrities. <laughs> right, so um, how many of us know about derivatives? Options, futures? So a fairly good amount of people, right? So 
what derivatives did to the financial markets parametrics can do for insurance so it's 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 as the definition is as simple as derivatives it's something which is based on an index right think of earthquake insurance or rainfall insurance rainfall can be measured on an index of millimeter scale of the amount of rain received so i can say that in isb if the rain is you know above 145 mm on a particular day it means that it rained heavily and if that case is observed i would pay all the students some fixed amount of money because i know you would have missed something or the else maybe not isb is not a good example maybe a match right there the rainfall insurance would make all the difference and maybe a farm right so farmers india is a agriculture economy we have more than 70% land which is used in crop sowing and their rains makes all the difference crops like maize which is heavily dependent on rain but only at a specific time like crops like paddy rice it's definitely you know dependent on lot of rains lot of water to keep it growing so if i can sell this insurance to the farmer saying that you know what if in some season there's not enough rain for you to cover um i can i can come and uh, you know pay out if if that is the situation so that's what parametrics is all about it's different from traditional insurance in a way that there's no loss assessment there's no indemnification the principle of indemnification in an insurance is basically when someone comes and sees the loss right they do not trust you that there has been a loss so for example if there is a earthquake and you have bought a home insurance they would not just pay you right away they would come they would see your house they would see the extent of damage and they would still not pay they would then ask you to rebuild the house and give them the bills and then they will settle the bills maybe partly or fully is up to the insurance companies so that is the principle of insurance sorry that's the principle of indemnity in insurance and that is where it is a stark difference with parametric insurance because parametrics do not indemnify it's a benefit based cover we get to know the magnitude of the earthquake we pay out game over that's all you don't have to come to us you don't have to submit proof you don't have to do anything <laughs> the last point of parametrics is what makes it really really interesting is that it can cover derived risk so let's talk about this photo let's say i'm going on a skiing event in switzerland i think snow bombing some other snow events are really really good events and i i am a avid skier and i really want to sort of you know enjoy my holiday and that fine week it doesn't snow so do you know what a fresh snow is called it's called powder so when it snows very fresh it's called powder and if there's no powder in the place you would not enjoy your ski at least not that much as you would if there was fresh snow so all the people who ski would know this as a fact so what i can do is i can define a uh, insurance on the snow cover and i can say if the powder is less than certain millimeter i would pay you because you know you have booked your whole sort of trip and you're traveling from india to singapore you're paying 5 6 lakh rupees of flight and hotel cost and you know it's a it's a significant expense and it would be a shame if there's no snow another event let's say i am a ice cream manufacturer or let's say i am a winter garments brand because there's global warming that example is much more relevant so what if one particular winter is not cold enough what are the consequences of that winter i mean a layman would say of course the sales of winter garments would drop right if the winter is not cold enough the sales of winter garment will drop and i would loot business as a you know as a manufacturer let's say I, if i'm lux, lux cozy and the winter is not cold enough i will not sell all those in a wears and all my advertisement would not mean for anything so in that case what insurance companies can do is create covers which can settle if the temperature rise or drop is not above a certain degree and that's where parametrics can really come into play this is uh, one of the travel insurance product that i spoke about it's called axa fizzy we have a indian version which is called bharti axa smoothie so it's going to be live soon it's already approved by the irda so current pro travel process i told you it's a cumbersome process it's a lot of paperwork and it takes a lot of time so i was in australia a couple of weeks back and my flight from delhi to mumbai got cancelled So I was really excited, you know, being from insurance industry and being purchased insurance. I thought, yes, this is my chance to get finally my claim. And I had a Bharti Axa policy. I hope no one from Bharti Axa is sitting here. And I'll trim this out from the recording. So I thought, okay, this time I'll definitely claim it. And I am working in the insurance industry for quite a while now. I think two and a half, three years. So I thought, okay, yes, this is the time. And when I really went to claim, this guy showed me a very sneaky clause. which said that if flights are cancelled 
only for inclement weather condition they would be paid. And my flight was cancelled because of operational issues. The operator has some. So I was feeling like so furious and I could immediately relate why people hate insurance. It's because, you know, and it's right. It's all the right reason to hate insurance. I would do it too. No offense. That's why it's more important to think from a consumer side that, you know, what makes it more relevant? What makes it more affordable? You know, I don't want to pay so much of money to just get my delays covered, right? I care most about delays. So I was flying from Mumbai to Hyderabad today and my flight was from 6.30 in the morning and I was supposed to land at 7.30. Now, if it had been one hour delayed, it was game over for me. I would not be standing at this stage. So that's why it's more important to sort of, you know, think about products which are more relevant for the Indian audience and, and, and design them accordingly. This is a, because it's a technical uh, conference, this is a small AWS diagram that I created yesterday for you guys to go through. It defines how we use different components in, in our actual product, which is live right now, and how these seamless components interact with each other. So there's a UI, which does a data post to a uh, DynamoDB, and it's connected with a serverless Lambda. And Lambda, for those of you who don't know, is a serverless, serverless computing platform where you can just upload your code, and they charge you for running on the runtime. So it's a really good one because you don't have to buy all these machines and code on them and keep up the uptime for them. And then you expose it via an API to the consumer. And there's a live flight status API, which also you kind of you know, go through to get the status of the, the, the flights. So let's talk about, again, let's talk about claims in, so, so these products, right, all these products are typically where the claims process is reimagined and you would expect all the good things to happen here, thanks to platforms like these, these, and thanks to the, you know, forward thinking approach of companies like Bharti Aksa. So crop insurance is called Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana in India. Uh, the claims, oh, sorry, the, the premiums are sponsored by the government. The government pays about 98% of the premiums. State government pays about 48, 49%. The central government paid about 49%. And the farmer pays just 2% of the premiums. So in a way, it's very beneficial for the farmers. But, you know, contrary to the popular belief, all the farmers are not that um, genuine. And there are some farmers, especially in the regions like Haryana and Punjab, who are really, really rich. I mean, these guys have Audis and BMWs, right? And there's a very specific event that happens in the crop life cycle. It's called crop cutting experiment. So what happens in a crop cutting experiment is there's a guy who visits the crop field and measures how much is the yield. And basis of the yield, if it's less, we pay out the farmers. So what we observed was for multi-picking crops like cotton and chili, right? People actually tamper with the pickings. So people, what they would do is before we go to the field, they would pick the cotton, take the bulb off and say there was no yield, right? There's no literal way of us going there and proving them that no, you're wrong. I mean, the guy who is going there for sort of, you know, measuring the yield can be taken to a different location. He's just going on a bike, right? He doesn't know what is the, ex so right now we give him a mobile or a tablet device with the lat long in it. So we needed to really prove the evidence that, you know, we know that this is tempered and there's a uh, thing. So this is what the solution was. It's called NDVI, Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. It's captured from a satellite called Landsat, which is orbiting every 12 minutes on the Earth's outer surface. And NDVI can be really a good proxy for measuring the crop health. It basically absorbs how much radiation was transmitted to the crops and how much was emitted back. And the difference of that corresponds to the growth stage of the crop. And then we used it. So the black line is the tampered field and the blue lines are the other fields. The selection of the CCE plots happened here on 18th uh, something something. And this is where the harvesting period actually begins on 7th November. And you can see clearly that this guy reported a dip on 23rd October. So something really happened there, but we need to prove it, right? So what we did was this. We got this data from the satellite image. It's uh, really freely available, but not for commercial purpose. So we had to pay for it. And then you can basically just see the difference and you can go to the uh, government and say, yes, you know, this is tampered with and you can actually get your money back. So we did that. We recovered about 20, 30 crores of money back. And that's a 
That's a good thing. Second use case, floods. How do you make sure? And again, this is floods from an insurance uh, purview, not floods from a government relief purview. So how do you make sure that you map the floods in, in a very short time? How do you make sure that you map the extent of damage of the floods to the crop, right? The answer is Sentinel-1 satellite. It's, uh, it's a satellite which is deployed by the European Space Agency. It's a satellite which basically relies on the solar radiation to capture its uh, data points. And there's another satellite called Sentinel-2, which is sort of a radar-based satellite. It doesn't need solar radiation because it has its own um, capacity. So what we did there was we mapped the floods in the regions of Bangalore. And because I'm running out of time, I'll quickly skim through it. This is before floods. This is the floods on 27th August. This is on 8th September. Both were floods, but 27th one was a bit more in magnitude, right? This is a village. There was Samundra in Karnataka. It grows primarily paddy. 27th August, this is the extent of the floods. 8th September, it's a bit less, but it's still there. About 38% of the crop was damaged. Paddy was insured. Paddy is hydrophilic, means it loves water. So there was not much actual damage because, you know, it's rice. But let's take this example, which is Benehali, and they grow maize. And there, the same floods, right? They caused about 45% of the damage. The yield was 35% less in the crops, right? So what we can do using the satellite data is, you know, use computer vision, image processing to really, you know, map the damage and the extent of damage and then look, send these ground fields to go there, you know, do anything they can to sort of contain and limit the damage. Other applications of satellite imaging. So can you guess what this image is from? Which area is this from? Any guesses? You can be loud, just shout out a name. Of course, it's a hilly area. You can see the mountain edge. Some what geography? What country? It's Australia. And Australia in the news. I was there a couple of weeks ago. It's in the news for bushfires, which is really, really sad because more than one billion wildlife is dead already. I mean, let's take that number. It's not a good thing, right? As a humanity, we have failed ourselves when we say that you know we are very proud of profits, the economic growth, it doesn't amount to anything in front of a koala who has just lost its entire family. Right? So what we can do for mapping the fires is sort of you know take the heat maps and the heat maps is again given from satellite and map these sources of fire. Because when you are doing an airdrop, it's very difficult to find out which exactly is the source of fire. Can you tell in this diagram where exactly is the fire? I don't think. So you need to have satellite-based imaging so that you can find out where exactly is the source of fire and have labeled them. And this area on the left is actually the one which is most severe, but also there are like middle areas which, if contained, can save a lot of wildlife, right? So these are the areas which are mapped. And let's quickly talk about transportation. We can take the questions after this. So transportation as an industry has evolved a lot. We had time when we would proudly own a car, now we have Ola Uber, and in future, in India, maybe we will have autonomous driving very soon. It's already there in Europe and the US markets. So really, in India, motor insurance is the biggest vertical for insurance. It's about 60% of the business. And we have observed that there's a lot of fraud claims. People just claim for anything and everything. They think we have insurance and we can just you know, bang the car and get the money from the insurance companies. That is not a right approach. So what they do is they say, okay, this was a damage and they had a damage from the last year. They say both the damage have basically been done in the one accident and they ask the money for both, which is ethically wrong. They ask their cars to be damaged by a big truck so that they can submit it in a total damage claim and they can get the whole money back, right? There is cash for crash. So there's a very new approach required to sort of handle the claims in a motor insurance use case. And again, computer vision to the rescue. So what we do is we do a damage profiling. We see what are the areas in a car which can fit a signature, right? Like our thumbprint has a very specific signature. The car damage would also have a very unique signature. Think of it like this. If I have collided the left side of my bumper, there is no chance in heaven that my rear 
back bumper is damaged. Right? It's not possible in that damage unless it's like some accidental movie or something like that. So there's a very unique fingerprint of every damage which we can identify using machine learning and we can then match the signature on the already existing repository of our damages. So we can see that what is the observed pattern and in the history of the claims reported, does this pattern fit in, right? And once we do that, we can actually sort of help limit the fraud in use cases. That's my time, guys. Thank you so much. You can reach out to me on this email. Thank you so much.